What is up YouTube and welcome to this, this Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. video. So while this week we didn't really have that much in the storytelling, there was no kind of, while the plot moved forward, we never actually got much major reveals but the last couple of weeks we've had quite a lot of reveals since the show has come back off its Olympic hiatus. So if you're new to the channel, Please do consider leaving a like down below and subscribing with notifications on if you enjoy the video. So, Ace of Shield, they we finally go back to England. We go to Herefordshire, which is a nice little county in the UK. Lots of affluent people there. And we go to a facility, a radioactive facility, a Hydra base, which didn't look like an English power base whatsoever. It was just really funny watching that. I was like, oh yes, Hereford. And this is going to be a niche thing here. So if you've watched Stargate SG-1, you will remember, or you may or may not, remember an episode where they go to England, they go to find this brand new Stargate, where they find it's the kind of the over... I can't remember what they're called, but they have like these staffs, and they're, they're like the big villain in like season 10. And it just really reminded me of that, and I was like really really miss Stargate I really really miss that show it was just so good but that's a tangent we're gonna stop right there and we have Fitz and Simmons who now believe that they are invincible so they are at this base and we see the superior again and the superior you know what I've spoken at length on these videos about how much I really don't actually like the superior as a character it wasn't for me i'd never liked him last season if you watched my videos last season you probably didn't because they didn't get many views <laughs> but i just did i just didn't like him it just wasn't my cup of tea but i can see why people certainly do like him i've spoke to what the geek quite a lot about the 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 superior and if you are a fan of Agents of Shield, I highly recommend going and check out a um, What the Geek as well on YouTube because he does quite a lot of Agents of Shield content, a lot more than myself. So give him a subscribe. He's a really awesome dude, really really nice guy. But Fitz and Simmons and now Yo Yo, we are here at the the back. It's the back of the last episode. Now, one thing I find a flaw in this: they they believe that they're invincible. Okay, so they believe they're invincible, but. They're only invincible unless they do something which doesn't match the set path, which is what we found out towards the end of this episode when Simmons was attacked by Ruby. So they're going to have to do things a lot different and they have gone on this loop and loop and loop. And one thing I find kind of odd in this is a lot of other time travel shows will show failed loops. We've seen that in Doctor Who, we've seen that in The Flash and many many others and one thing which i find weird and a bit jarring is we never actually see these failed loops unless we are in the middle of a failed loop at the moment so that's pretty cool to be honest that we may be actually in this failed loop which is probably what they are thinking as well so they go to and the superior is here and he's controlling all of these which i thought I thought it was a bit obvious to me. I, I thought uh, that the, the these people who are supposedly really smart, they're, they're pretty dumb in this episode, to be honest. I mean, they don't even notice the Vita Chamber, which was used to create Captain America. What, obviously, the first Avenger, the first superhero, and they don't really notice it. And as Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., surely they would know all about this. They have access to the highest level of secrets i would suspect and i would have thought that they would know all about this this chamber that was used to create captain america and they don't notice it they're like oh well we don't know what this does and it does this thing which is basically what created captain america so they're just like they're pretty dumb and don't don't recognize that which i thought was really it took me out of the episode to be honest and the other thing was that yo-yo couldn't use her hands in super speed which now why well it doesn't really make sense I, I guess the fact that as they're moving this they don't move as fast as her or it depends completely upon how her powers you or, or manifested because other species in, in like dc they they use the speed force or they have an equation but here it's an inhuman power so we don't know too much exactly how that works and I thought it was a bit dumb that they didn't think about that. They were like, oh, yeah, the speed thing. You know what? And also, as well, what we could have done, uh, we could have introduced that and added another level of threat 
is the fact that she could have used those powers at the start to go in and destroy everything and then be like, oh, actually, this not, it doesn't work. And now the superior is in there. We're going to have to go in alone. That would have been a bit better, in my opinion. But the episode worked as well as it did as it could have, to be honest. And we had another setup here with Daisy versus Ruby, who is a complete badass and got her butt handed to her, which... I thought was a bit lame considering the threat that Ruby needs to be. However, she's already got one up. So now it's one versus one on Shield versus Ruby. So we're equal and we're going into the rubberneck match to use a a wrestling term for you there. But it was pretty neat. I did... I did enjoy that. It was quite a serviceable fight there. Deke stupidly ran back because he loves Daisy, as we found out, in a really hilarious bit when he was strapped to the table. And part of me is worrying he's not going to survive. I'm going to posit my theory here as to why he might not survive. So, so far we have Fitz, Simmons, Fitz, Simmons and Yo-Yo who are believing that they are invincible. They believe they're invincible. But like I said, they're only invincible because X, Y, and Z has to happen and for them to survive in the future. But the problem is they don't know what those bits are. So they're going against their their better nature, which I think is a good enough theory and idea to do. But the problem is they're going to have to do things they really don't want to do. So that involves letting Simmons die. And, well, that means that Deke, he won't exist. If Simmons doesn't have a child with Fitz, then Deke's parents, grandparents, whatever, his lineage just ends right there. And he won't, he won't, he will cease to exist. He'll do it back to the future and just fade while he's playing Johnny Be Good. Which, really, they, if I was writing the show, I would have put in a Johnny Be Good reference there. Just, just, I would have had to have put that in from Back to the Future. If you haven't seen Back to the Future, what are you doing? Stop this video, go watch it and come back. But I did, I do think that Deke is for the chop, which I don't like. I would, I want him to survive. However, one of the interesting things is that he maybe might have a kid with Daisy. There is a lineage down there. I've got a wild theory, which I'm just brewing at the moment. It's just, it's just on the boil at the moment. But I, I hope he survives. I want him to survive because he's such a good character. He's so funny and. The Jeff Ward, I think that's the... I may have got the name wrong. But I really do like the actor who plays him, to be honest. He really is a fun, fun character. Now, the problem is, we've got Talbot. And now he knows that his family are under attack by all the contingency for General Hale. And he needs to comply. And now, I think that they were going Winter Soldier... I think they might have been going Winter Soldier on Talbot. They might have been mind-tricking him. So, he, they're saying you've got to comply, etc, etc. So, part of me is thinking that this wasn't a way for him to kind of realise that his family was under threat. So, S.H.I.E.L.D. wouldn't know. They wouldn't know, like, the comply or they wouldn't know what she's saying. But the fact that she's reading off a script, his his wife, I think that is simply that they have triggered him and they've gone Winter Soldier, which would work because Hydra, th- that whole Winter Soldier program does work. So the Winter Soldier is definitely being used here or the Winter Soldier ideals are being used here. So Talbot will be a ticking time bomb within S.H.I.E.L.D. as Hale can unleash him later on. Or we don't know what this trigger has done because obviously in Winter Soldier... We did have these trigger words which tell him to do whatever. So that was cool as well. Nice little touch there at the end. And pretty much everyone is in a bad position right now, to be honest. And one thing I'm expecting is those those LMD mech things to turn back on. And we don't know what that drone thing was as well. I expect that's possibly a a kind of backup signal or control for the LMDs that were at the Hereford base or Hereford Shear. I'm guessing they were in Hereford. I'm, I'm guessing. But overall, it was a good episode. It was serviceable. We've got May has un- revealed her undying love to Coulson in the best way that she can. So I did enjoy that as well. That's pretty neat. A nice little addition to the uh, to cap off the episode. But Yo-Yo has revealed that Coulson has to die. So, yeah, he has to die. So that is it for this video. Please drop a like and 
whatever down below comment what you think if you want a trailer breakdown let me know I'll probably do that tomorrow along with a gotham one as well and i've got more mcu coming at you as well so i'll see you soon goodbye